Hey guys, it's Sneaky Turtle. Welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Just before this video starts, make sure you guys uh, hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure your notifications are on. Less than 1% of you guys are subscribed, so make sure that you click the subscribe button just before this video starts. Um, but with that out of the way, we are building a Starliner in Kerbal Space Program. As many of you, as many of you probably know, the Starliner capsule has uh, docked at the International Space Station, uh, which is really, at the time of uh, filming, it's still up there. Uh, it's docked at the International Space Station, and uh, it, I, th I think it's a really cool capsule. It took a while to get it to the International Space Station, so a lot of you probably know that the first attempt was unsuccessful, but that's okay because they redeemed themselves with this launch. So we're building the Starliner capsule and the Atlas V rocket to carry it into orbit. Um, I use lots of water propellant tanks, solar panels on the bottom of the Starliner capsule. I, I actually do like how it ended up turning out, I thought it looked pretty good. Uh, and then I throw some SRBs on the side, which they don't really have perfectly sized SRBs in the game. Um, they, the SRBs should probably be a little bit smaller, but the fuel tank also should have, the lower stage fuel tank should have probably also been bigger. Uh, but then we can get ready to crossfade it to launch in just a few minutes here. So setting up the abort system, and then we can crossfade to launch. One of the things I forgot to show in this video is the abort system actually does work. The uh, service module is able to detach, fly away, and the capsule with it, and then detach the service module. And those portions. But here we are with liftoff, the solid rocket boosters light up, and the main RS-25 engines ignite pushing the vehicle into space. We're doing a roll program now, and we can speed up the rocket as it goes now. This flight took a long time because it was a little bit laggy, but we begin to pitch the vehicle over now. It, we had to wait a little bit to pitch the vehicle over because uh, the Atlas V is very unstable when it's at low speeds because it's such a funky shape. Uh, and then we can put the RS-25s on higher power, which gives us more gimbal authority. So we don't really have to worry about uh, gimbal control anymore. Throttling down the engines, so that we're not just burning an excessive amount of fuel. And then we can push the Starliner into orbit, and then get ready to dock with the space station. Uh, there is a space station in this video that we will actually be docking the Starliner with, but it will not be the International Space Station. I did not have enough time to build the International Space Station, so I just built a little uh, space station that we can dock the Starliner to. So we have upper stage separation, and then we can get a rendezvous with the uh, space station, and then get ready to dock. So we're getting the encounter close, as close as we possibly can, and then we'll just burn a little bit to uh, slow the vehicle down and then get closer by using the engines to burn to target and then slow down again, retrograde to target, and then repeat that process until we get there. Definitely not the most efficient way to do it, it's just the easiest. So now we're burning at target, uh, and then once we get to the target, then we can slow the vehicle down. We'll be incredibly, or should be relatively close to target. So this next encounter, I think we were 0 0.5 kilometers away, so I could actually see the station then. Then I just burn a little bit towards it. Just a little tiny bit of fuel to spare on that on that upper stage, but that's okay. I actually did use every single stage in this rocket, which is awesome. And every single one was expended of fuel, which is really cool. Now we can use the RCS thrusters to just push the Starliner over to the Space station and opening up that little docking port in a few seconds. So the vehicle down with the RCS thrusters point towards target, open up the little docking port, and just use the RCS thrusters to navigate the vehicle in. And we can just use the, I think it's I, H, N, K, and J. I always forget, but I think that's what it is to get the RCS thrusters to work. And then we successfully docked with the space station. And then the crew can hang, around, hang out on the space station for a few days before they 
come down. Well, I guess a few months is in real life, but we're just gonna time warp around the planet a few times and then detach, close the docking port, use the RCS thrusters to back up, and then we're gonna deorbit with the RCS thrusters. Then once we're in a uh, orbit where we're gonna descend, we can decouple the service module. Service module has been separated, and then we can just turn off SAS and just kind of let the atmospheric reentry pressure keep the vehicle stable, and then everything should be fine from here. Deploying the parachutes, and then going in for a nice landing in the ocean. And then get ready for splashdown. And... Splashdown. That'll be the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.